Saints, listen. The following recommendation that I'm giving you, it's not something written in the Bible or anything like that. It's just a recommendation I'm giving you based on anthropological knowledge of human behavior. Because human beings are social creatures with function in groups. And every behavior has a function, whether it's a group function or a sociological function or a psychological function. Psychological functions are individual functions, sociological functions are group functions. So human behavior has a function, both good and bad behavior. Bad behavior being behaviors that are self-destructive. For example, if someone is smoking a lot of cigarettes, what is the psychological function? The psychological function is to distress the individual. The individual that smokes a lot wants to get rid of stress, and smoking does it for a short while. The sociological function is that the community is not bothered by whatever afflicts the individual. Because if that individual wouldn't have all the, those cigarettes to relieve themselves, the issue would work out in a public way that would affect the, uh, the community. And now, the, because the community is affected by it, they need to do something about it. But because smoking can cause harm, that's why later in human history, they decide you can only smoke in smoking areas. So there's a sociological function as well as a psychological function for the bad behavior. Or let's say that there is this prohibition on never asking a woman her age. It's a restriction that people don't explain, but here's the thing. If in that community it's common to discard women after they reach a certain age, because they're not considered sexual, sexually relevant anymore, then that's something very hurtful for women. So the psychological motive for that restriction is that women are not triggered in realizing they can be discarded. Because once this happens, and women lose their minds, the community has to deal with affliction. So the community wants to avoid a confrontation with itself, and the individual wants to be accepted. So, for the females, it becomes comfortable that they don't have to face this fact that the community may discard them, for other people who follow this rule, they avoid being blamed for an escalation and the community as a whole, the sociological function, they avoid facing themselves. So why am I explaining all of this to you? Because you need to understand this before I explain my recommendation or advice to you. In every human relationship that you're in, whether it's your marriage or a, a sexual relationship, or it is a friendship or it's just you being colleagues or it's just people live in the same block or neighborhood as you as you or whether it's a professional relationship whatever type of human interaction is you're involved in always make sure that you have your leverage in that interaction and in that relationship whatever relationship and whatever interaction make sure you have your lever leverage in it Look, of course, some people have more leverage than you in some areas. When it comes to discussing things about cars and you're not a car mechanic, of course, the car mechanic has a leverage in that interaction. Okay? Or when you see, when we have a little child of three years old and have an adult, of course, adult has, has over that leverage over the three year old. So, differences in human beings are natural. So, sometimes, you have more leverage than the other, and other times the other has more leverage than you. Always make sure you have some leverage, some advantage to steer the, the relationship or the interaction in your favor. Because the moment you end up in a situation where you have no leverage and zero advantage, then you're at the mercy of the other or other people. And in this world, that seldom ends up well. So, any human relationship or any interaction there is out there, 
make sure there's a leverage in it on your behalf. Maybe you're not the one talking. Maybe you're just attending a meeting. Even if you're not doing the talking, at least let your interests or what concerns you be represented over there. Make sure that there's a leverage on your behalf or that you have some advantage in the, in the matter. Because society tells you to forget all about yourself and to focus on the group. That's what society tells you. Society tells you to invest in the group, to invest in society. But here's the thing, where's you in the picture? What if you lose your job? Then it tell you look for another job, or it tell you ask for welfare, or if there's no welfare, you will ask friends and family. So society expects things from you unconditionally, but when it's you asking things back, society tends to look weird at you as if who are you to just demand things? The world owes you nothing. So society teaches you to have no leverage whatsoever so that society can have its easy way with you. Listen to what I'm saying. Even the Heavenly Father, God himself, who is the owner of all physical and spiritual matter, he is life himself and he's the owner of all life, including us. Even God himself grants you a leverage when you walk with him. And that leverage is not to protect yourself against him because there's no danger in the Heavenly Father, but that leverage is to empower you. So if even the Heavenly Father himself wants you to have a leverage when you walk with him, then who are those creatures out there that think that they're entitled to take away all your leverage so that they have it very easy? A lot of folks want to take away all your le leverage and all your advantage, so you have nothing to say to them. They want you in a position where it's either their way or the highway. They want to be in a position where they can get away with taking advantage of you. That's why they want to have all the leverage. That's why they want to have all the advantage. Anyone who's not interested in granting you any advantage in what they're involving you in, they're exploiting you. Anyone out there who involves you in something without even considering granting you an advantage or a leverage, they just want to exploit you. Why? Because if they want to have all the advantage and they want to have all the leverage, it's because they're only interested in having their way. They're not concerned with you. They don't care about you. You only exist to make things easy for them. They're self-obsessed. Listen to what I'm saying here. Every human interaction, every human relationship, if there is no advantage and no leverage in it for you, leave it. This is not narcissistic. I'm not telling you that if you don't hear what you want to hear, or if people don't validate your opinion, you automatically just walk away because you feel rejected, or that you only want to hear things you want to hear. I'm not promoting narcissistic avoidance. That's not what this is about. For example, if you are on the bus or in your on at the railway station and someone's looking very angry at you. You never saw this individual before. You think, whoa, what's going on? That individual has issues that they haven't resolved. Okay. You can't help that they have issues. You didn't cause those issues. If you're part of a community that enabled harm on him, then yes, you are part of a community that enabled harm, but you were not the one directly causing the harm. Anyway, that individual needs to take responsibility and look for help. But instead, he's looking for someone to escalate upon. Now, in this situation, there's no advantage for you. He or she just wants to escalate on you, and you'll be left behind with the harm. You, you will end up in a hospital. You may lose your job. You may lose your health. You may even lose your life. And the only thing they get is relief, and then they look for someone else to escalate upon. So in this case, there is no advantage and no leverage in the situation for you. So you just don't engage. You don't confront them by asking them, Sir, why are you staring at me? No, don't do that. Don't engage. Because there's no advantage and no leverage in it for you. If someone wants to approach you to offer you a deal that will benefit both of you, okay, that's different. Now you can consider the deal. Or let's say that you're drunk and you're about to go to your car. Someone stops you and forces you to take the bus. Then there is an advantage in it for you. Your life is preserved as well as the lives of other people. So, even when people force you to do things, if there's an advantage in it for you, 
that will benefit you, they at least were they at least have human decency to consider you. And coercion is not always bad. Sometimes coercion is good. Sometimes coercion is justified. As long as you are included. But what often happens in the world is that you are expected to conform without any leverage and without any advantage on your part. And I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not telling you this to, to excuse narcissistic and selfish behavior. I'm telling you this to be realistic. If someone is not willing to consider any leverage or advantage on your part, that means that they're only there to take advantage of you. So from time to time, ask yourself, where's your, your le leverage? Where's your advantage? But at the other hand, also be aware with this. Because when scam artists want to scam you, they will often offer fake advantages to you. Or they will promise fake advantages. So I'm not saying that just because there's an advantage for you in something, that's a good thing. Because when Satan wants to destroy you, he will give you a short-term advantage that will, just, that will backfire on you later on. So yes, you should check your own advantage in a situation or an interaction or relationship, but also check whether the advantage is worth it. Well, this is it for now. Keep it on agreement with Christ and be at peace.